page 160. I couldn't get a sense of what Noah himself thought of all this. He had no time for me. He had friends and girlfriends, girlfriend wannabes. Anyway, I tried aching out his locker a few times. It was covered in post-it notes of congratulations with pink envelopes drenched in perfume jammed into the air vents. When I finally did find him there, he was always surrounded by admirers. Outside of school, he was just hard to pin down. He had interviews. Thanks to that appearance on the Rust Trustman Hour, the story of the super kid was starting to go behind, beyond Hardcastle, and his parents picked him up almost every day to whisk him to some newspaper office, a radio station, or TV station. When the Uchilis family, Prius, was parked in the school's circular drive, it caused more excitement than the sighting of Air Force One. When he was at our house visiting Tina, he was too busy for me. Katie was following through on her promise to turn him into a better cheerleader. Day after day, Brad took Tina out for a walk in her carriage so his wife could work with Noah in the backyard. It was a lost cause. He couldn't do a cartwheel or a somersault. He couldn't balance on one leg for more than a second or two. He could throw a punch and yell fight, but not at the same time. He wasn't even good at clapping. Every so often, Brad would parade by the sidewalk, straight arming the frilly pink carriage in front of him like it was a battering ram he was about to smash through some enemy fortification. The sight of Noah flopping all over the grass, trying to jump, kick, or dance was almost too painful to him. Each time he circled by, his deepening exasperation had turned his face a little grayer. It's a lost cause. I couldn't help but blurt on one pass. There's no such thing. He pushed the carriage into my arms. Take the helm. He strode across the lawn and stopped right in front of Noah, who was on the ground after yet another failed cartwheel. Ahem, <clears throat> Brad barked. To my amazement, Noah scrambled to his feet and actually stood at attention. My arms strayed against his sides. Katie laughed. All right, Brad. Dismissed, he told her. Very funny, but Noah and I are working on Dismissed, he said with more authority this time, and she backed away a step. Noah let out a nervous giggle, which he swabbled when Brad addressed him again. Cheerleader, you lack balance, basic coordination, and physical confidence. From now on, this neighborhood is your parade route, and I am your commanding officer. Is that clear? Noah tried to look at Katie, but she avoided his eyes. Well, um, the proper response is, yes, sir. Yes, sir, Noah managed, totally cold. Outstanding. Brad wrapped the strap of Tina's diaper bag under Noah's arm and followed his shoulder so it hung like a backpack. Forward march. And off they went down the sidewalk with Brad counting. Hup, two, three, four. Hup, two, three, four. As they passed, Noah shot me a pleading glance, which I answered with a helpless shrug. Eyes front, Brad snapped. Even my baby niece seemed fascinated by it all, but she was too young to sit up in the carriage and watch her crazy father. Maybe that was for the best. I rolled Tina back into her Mom, don't you think that we should rescue poor Noah? I asked Katie. She looked thoughtful. Maybe Brad's onto something. Seriously? Marine training for the cheerleading squad? She shrugged. Let's give Brad a chance. He can't do anything worse than I've been doing. It was almost an hour before they appeared, two specks on the horizon, one four times the size of the other. The Hup 234 wafted in on the wind. Brad was still going strong, but Noah was dragging. He was red-faced, panting like an old dog in a heat wave. And yet it was just me. Or did he look a little better marching along in rhythm? His shoulders back? At least they would have been if he had shoulders. Okay, it wasn't a perfect posture, but at least it was a posture. When they finally got back, he collapsed onto the front steps, hyperventilating. He did great, Noah, Katie approved. Outstanding, Brad agreed, removing the diaper bag from Noah's back. Same time tomorrow? Noah didn't have enough breath to respond. I figured we'd never see him again. I mean, I was stuck with Brad. He was family, but Noah didn't have to put up with this. He was the super kid, at least everybody thought he was. Yet, the very next day, after cheerleading practice, there he was at our door, and the day after that, and so on. On the fourth day, I looked out my window to see Candy frolicking in a huge truck tire that was lying in the grass of the backyard. Uh-oh. Brad was getting creative. Noah was in for it. 
And when Noah couldn't budge the tire truck, much less flip it, Brad took off with the wheels of his SUV for his cadet to train with. Noah was dubious. Couldn't we just march some more? We'll do that later, Brad confirmed. Marching is outstanding for cardio, but tire flips strengthen and endurance. Well, it's just that the average light truck tire weighs 35 pounds, Noah persisted. That's depending on the tread wear. Brad cut him off. Attention! Noah scrambled to attention. If I didn't know better, I would have sworn his back was straighter than it had been just a few days ago. Cheerleader, if you can't flip this tire as far as that fence, you're not fit to carry the pom-poms of the Hardcastle Middle School cheerleading squad. Is that clear? All right, Noah sighed. I mean, yes, sir. By this time, trainer and trainee had an audience. Katie, Tina, Beatrice, Candy, and me. It took a lot of struggling, not to mention Brad barking encouragement all the way. And Noah actually managed to get the tire across the yard. But by the time he made it, he barely had the strength left to high-five Tina's tiny hand. Outstanding was Brad's opinion. My brother-in-law had plenty more in store for his training. Push-ups, sit-ups, jumping jacks. Noah did 11, not of each, in total. One push-up, three sit-ups, and seven jumping jacks. Depending on whether or not I should count the one where he got his feet tangled up and fell flat in his face. Jumping rope had been scrapped because the cord kept wrapping itself around Noah's neck. Outstanding, Brad said again. I had to admit that watching the guy strangle himself with a jump rope was kind of outstanding, meaning it was definitely stood out in your memory. I felt sorry for Noah, but then it dawned on me. My brother-in-law hadn't woken me up for a pre-dawn run ever since beginning on Noah's marine training. Brad had someone to torture, and it wasn't me. The only one-on-one -on -one time I ever got with Noah these days was on those minibus rides to the Academy for Robotics class. And then he spent most of the time on his phone, checking his Twitter feed. I put my hand in his shoulder. Noah? Mm. He continued to thumb the small screen. Louder. Noah? Hey, my tuna melt for lunch got 114 likes. Eventually, I got so sick of being ignored that I ripped the phone out of his hand and jammed it into his backpack. He was annoyed. I was looking at that, you know. That's the problem, Noah, I snapped. Nobody should care about your tuna melt. But they do. And I got a lot of retweets for my root beer float from the Scoops Ahoy, 22. Because you posted it in the first place, I insisted. It's not my fault I'm famous. That made my blood boil. It is your fault. It's 100% your fault. Are you guys okay? The driver tossed over his shoulder. Fine, I replied. If he didn't count the fact that I was on the verge of strangling this brain-dead genius, I dropped my voice to a whisper. Everything was going fine until you got the brilliant idea to whip out the St. Christopher medal and tell the world you're the super kid. I did that for you. He sounded so sincere and wounded that my anger died down a little. I know you did, and at first, but now look at yourself. Your whole life is a blur of high fames and your selfies with people liking your tuna mouth, and you've gotten into it so that you're forgetting the fact that it wasn't you. Well, of course I know it wasn't me, he defended himself. Okay, but don't deny that you're loving every minute of it. Fine, I like it, a little. A little, I pressed, a lot. But what's so bad about that? And anyways, even if I wasn't the one who jumped into the cab of the truck, I'm still the super kid in a way. I stared at him. How do you figure that? People read about me in the newspaper or see me on TV, he explained, and they feel good. Kids see me in the hall and they get to shake my hand, and it's the best thing about their day. What difference does it make if I'm not the actual person who saved the house? People think I am, and they don't have to be right. They just have to believe it. I actually groaned at that one. Maybe part of Noah's smarts was that he could talk himself into anything. The point is, I went on, you're going to blow it. How, he challenged, by talking too much. They don't teach this at genius school, but the key to every good lie is K-I-S-S. -S. Kiss? He nodded. It stands for keep it simple, stupid. Every time you retell a story, every interview you give, you run the risk of messing up a detail. Impossible, he scoffed. I have an eclectic memory. That means I never forget anything. I shook my head. You never know when something you're going to get asked something different, something you're not ready for. Sure, you were the one on the scene, but you weren't inside the truck. 
Once a reporter sniffs that something's not kosher, it's all over. No one will let it go until the truth comes out. I was pleading. If all this came unraveled, it was bad news for me and even worse for Beatrice. But it would be pretty awful for Noah, too. For the super kid to be exposed as a phony would be a total disaster. He'd be ruined in Hardcastle. His family would have to move away and start a new life. Someplace else. Around here, he would forever be the guy who lied so that everyone would think that he was a hero. And what was his response? I'm incapable of making that kind of mistake. Yeah, I challenged, so how come Chloe knows? Don't be silly. How does she know? She just does, Noah. She told me she's smart. And she's got more common sense in her little finger than the two of us combined. Lucky for us, she's keeping her mouth shut. I didn't mention the part where I spilled the beans and Chloe threw it back in my face. It still stung, although it's probably for the best that she didn't believe me. For the first time, Noah appeared a little rattled. Who does she think the super kid really is? Nobody. Her theory is that the truck missed the house on its own, and Kamitsky imagined the whole hero thing. He smiled smugly. So maybe Chloe isn't as smart as you say. How come I could see the walls closing in and Noah couldn't? 